Well, after a rocky start, we are finally on our way to the Bahamas. Uh, we just spent the last two weeks prepping the boat, doing all the little things we thought we needed to be done, and although we always prep in two weeks, there never seems to be enough time. We got the major things done. We got the oil change. Uh, I got new sending units for the fuel gauges. Things like that are all done. Um, the biggest thing we didn't get done is we didn't get a chance to wash the boat. The last week in Philly was cold and we just didn't want to do it in that kind of weather. And uh, so we're kind of embarrassingly dirty right now, but the first warm day we get, we're cleaning this thing. Um, and uh, maybe we'll just kind of wax it on the way too. Uh, right now, we, um, we left Philadelphia about an hour ago. We are on the Delaware, and it's kind of a crummy day on the Delaware. We have uh, white caps, really. There's uh, 12, 15 uh, knot winds with 25 knot gusts, and it's making it a little bit shaky. This boat, does, we don't care. I mean, we can ride right through this stuff, but usually the Delaware's like glass. Uh, we do have the current with us, so we'll be running at about 11 knots uh, at 1100 RPM, so I'm happy about that. Our plan is to go down to the C&D Canal. We're probably going to look for a slip at Schaefer's, and that's usually our first stop when we, when we go on this trip, and we're looking forward to that. It's kind of our, our launching point, and it's been two years since we've done this trip, so we are happy to be on, underway. In your eyes and I find it When you're leaving my mind I rewind it When you got it this good You don't fight it well, Something I've been looking forward to doing is putting in new fuel gauges because in the past the way Lynn and I have checked the level of the fuel in our boat goes something like this. Lynn has to get down on the floor, tap the fuel gauge with a hammer so it loosens up because they stick all the time. Then she has to yell up to me what it's the full. <laughs> See, Stop <laughs> before I spill fuel all over the uh, all over the marina. And uh, I just can't believe that uh, well first I can't believe that we've been doing this for three years. I but I really, really can't believe that a forty year old boat, nobody has come up with a better way of reading the fuel than actually lifting up the carpet and looking at a fuel gauge under the floor. So today we are going, it's me. So today what I am doing is I'm going to install a, um, a fuel gauge on a new senders and I'm gonna run wires up to the lower helm and um, hopefully that makes life a lot easier for us. Now this is the other fuel tank which is no better. And there's no way you can get a wrench or anything in there to loosen these sending units, so what I had to do was buy one of these. This is a 2 and 3 eighths inch socket that I had to purchase just to put onto the sending unit so that I could break the seal and it was tough. And This thing felt like it hadn't been uh, loosened in 40 years. But I was able to do it, I was able to get them broken loose and now I have them. And if you see if I pull it out, There we go. The way these things work is there's a little float on the bottom. And uh, as you fill up the tank, the float rises higher and higher and it changes the resistance, which changes the reading on the dial. The reason Lynn always has to tap it is because it sticks. The float sticks and you're never really sure where it is. So you tap it just to make sure it's, it's sliding okay. Uh, I am taking the sender out and I am going to put a more modern one in that has the ability to send information to a gauge on the lower helm. This is what the new sending units look like. It's a kind of a flotation piece of plastic here that slides up and down the shaft. And uh, it, from my understanding what it does is it trigger, triggers little magnets inside which change the resistance going to the, uh, to the gauge. Uh, it seems like a lot better design, it seems less likely to get stuck over the years, but I guess we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and put it in and wire it up.
one. See how it sticks. Does not slide very well. I could have cleaned it and then put it back in, and but Lynn would still be laying on her stomach for the next 4,000 miles. So let me get that off to the side here. Now, when you order these, you have to make sure you get the right length. It has to be the length to the bottom of your tank. So I had to pull these out first and order it. Both of my tanks are 18 inches deep, but my auxiliary tank is 21 inches deep. and get her wired up. Downside to these ones that I bought, I could not find any that were threaded like my tank. So I'm gonna end up having to use it like an adhesive silicone to hold it down in place so nothing can get out around it. Uh, it's either that or I have to drill holes into the tank and I really don't wanna do that. So I think the silicone would be the best idea. been procrastinating on this uh, all year <laughs> so I'm gonna change the oil this is something I saw a truck mechanic do and I never tried it before but they poked a hole into the bottom of the filter to let it bleed out before taking the filter off so I'm gonna try doing that Okay, so how did that do, poking a hole in the bottom? It was messy. Probably not as messy as the last time we did it. So it's worth doing? Yeah. Oops, I hit one this. Okay. What are we doing? Oh, reproach.
Oh man, look at the dirt. To the upper helm, uh, you can lock up the doors and all that, make sure all the levers are in okay. place. So okay. I'll, I'll take control of the Gladly relinquish <laughs> control. to enter the C and D Canal, which is a man-made waterway that connects the Chesapeake Bay with the Delaware Bay, saving hundreds of miles and making the trip all the way around Delaware and Maryland. The thing about the C and D, you have to be careful when you enter it because the water coming out or going in, the current may be different than the way the current is on the Delaware, which can be different because of the current on the Chesapeake is usually what's driving it. Now what will happen is um, you'll get like a little swirl in the water. Not always. It's always there a little bit, but sometimes it's very strong and I've had it turn the boat almost. Now, I'm, I'm aware of it now. The very first time we went through there, we went through on the Carver and I wasn't paying that much of attention and it almost spun the boat around. So it's not a big deal. You just power your way through it, but it's something to be aware of. And it's on this side, which is what side is it? Yeah, it's, it's on the Delaware side. When you come out the C&D on the other side, it, uh, it, you don't really notice it because it just kind of gradually turns into the Chesapeake Bay. But on this side, it literally comes right out into the middle of a river, which could be running up or running down depending on the, you know, the current and the tides.
Okay, well, we did a five-hour trip. We're down to 55% of the available electric from the lithium batteries. Okay. I think that calls for a drink. I just turned it on. That's why it says infinite now, because it's now charging again. But uh. So, uh, actually, we started out at about 96%. So, really, we used 40%. Um, and we consumed 102 amp hours. Obviously, you couldn't do that because we only have 138 amp hours, but we're supplementing it by the solar panels and the alternator on the engine. So, we probably could have ran for 48 hours without running out of electric, I think. Far out. We will be doing that soon. Our 48 hour run's coming up. Cheers. Cheers. We did it. We're here at first stop, which is uh, on the CD Canal. We're at Schaefer's Arena. And if you're ever coming down the CD, if you're coming through the bays, definitely stop here. It is a fantastic place. Uh, the people are so nice. Just the most nicest owners and dockhands. It's kind of a family business here. Restaurants great, food's outdoor, good. tiki bar, you know, it's 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 yeah. cool, definitely stop here. Yeah, but it's good. We always do. It's our it's our first stop on our way to the Bahamas, it'll be our last stop on our way home. Yeah. Cheers. Tradition. Uh, you know, like when like what did you do? What did you think when we hit the mud. You couldn't tell that the engine was dead. No, I didn't know what was happening. I thought I was losing control of my my of the micro commander that controls the boat because all of a sudden it wasn't doing what I was telling it to do. And then then I saw the turned up mud. And I realized, okay, I'm, I'm on a mound. That's why it's not doing what I'm telling it to do. Yeah. And then uh, and then I tried, you know, like kind of forcing my way off, and then then the engine died. I'm not sure. If, how what I was doing would have caused an airlock. I don't see that. I think, but it uh, was definitely an airlock. It yeah, wasn't got, sludge or crap. We got air in the line. I don't know how. We, we, we warmed it up for, what, 20 minutes yeah, at least? Yeah, you know? So there's yeah. no way I should have had air in that line. But, well, who knows? Well, let's hope that doesn't happen again. And you got to remember to put air in the steering. Yeah. yeah. And the gas gauges are a wonderful thing. <laughs> yeah, oh my god! <laughs> I mean, I was like not trusting them because I was like, oh, it's going to overflow. What's going to happen here? Yeah, I know. Well, First well, time using Before we leave tomorrow, measure them and okay. uh, see how close we are to the top. Okay. Because we don't really trust these gauges yet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if you're still listening. Yes. I mean, uh, we don't really trust them yet because uh, I, I don't know. We don't want to spill into the marina or anything like that. So we, we went like one or two notches below full. We figured we'd you know, undo them and take a look and see how high it is. Yeah. And so we get faith in them. Yeah. Just do it little by little. And then once we get faith yep. in and they're fuel gauges, not gas gauges. Oh, excuse me, fuel gauge. <laughs> <laughs> Diesel. It took Lynn like Diesel. took Lynn like two years to use the word fuel. It's yeah. like, are we gonna stop and get gas again? Are we gonna get gas again? Said proper. Hi, Lynn. Hey. <laughs> You're all there. Tom and Trish Kelly. <laughs> Hi. We, we were just telling Edward. He, well, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, all the I'm a YouTube nut, so yeah. I like to watch all. And we're boaters, big boaters. We watch a sea show. Are you power boaters? No, power boaters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Right. We had dinner and drinks with our new friends, Linda and Mark. Somehow we forgot to get a nice photograph of all of us together, but we had a great time. Thanks again and hope to see you on the way back.